Hi everyone, welcome back to Swarthmore and Pilates right now in particular. Hope everyone enjoyed their break. And so we can see the mat. Okay, perfect. So we'll start with some roller work. So just have a seat and we'll take the roller across under your hips. So you start with your knees bent. Again, into your back. Lift your hips up and roll it right across the sacrum. And then holding the roller here, pull one knee in and the other. Legs zipper together and just let the knees fall over to your right. And turn the head to the left. Go as far as you can. Keep the left shoulder blade down. Exhale. Press into the roller. Pull yourself back to vertical. Inhale, tipping the knees over to the left and turn your head to the right. The right shoulder blade is grounded here on the floor. Exhale to pull back to center and we do it again. So just rolling across the sacrum, maybe massaging out any points of tension in the glutes. Look away from your knees each time. I might not do that as I'm looking to see what's going on with the camera and what's going on in the room. And then letting the knees fall left, right shoulder blade heavy. This will help you get a little bit of a stretch across your chest if you're tight there. Exhale and use your obliques to pull your hips back level on the roller surface. We'll do one more set. So bring your knees over as far as you can. Eventually, you'd like to have the hips sort of parallel to the wall and the chest parallel to the ceiling. Exhale to bring them back. And one more time to the left of the legs. Keeping the shoulder blades grounded here on your mat. Exhale and pull everything back to center. From here, lift your legs up to the ceiling. So point with your feet and the right foot pulls back over the right shoulder and the left leg reaches out of the way. And then we just inhale to switch the legs. And exhale to switch again. Hopefully you're feeling that stretch in the hamstring as the leg comes back towards your shoulder. You can bend knees slightly or a lot. If that feels good, that's great. And you're also reaching the other leg out and down, stretch it across the room and let it sink to the floor. We're starting to work into getting a stretch into that deep hip flexor, your psoas. And let's switch, we'll do one more set. And then lift the legs up to the ceiling and we go into bicycle. So the right leg reaches forward as the left heel pulls in. You touch the toes down on the mat and extend the other leg as the right leg pulls in. Looking to extend the leg back over the chest and also to reach the leg forward and down towards the ground. Try to slide your foot across the floor to get the most hip opening possible. And then we'll reverse the direction of that foot. So the toes go down right in front of the roller and slide the foot forward to the fullest extension as possible before lifting that leg up to the ceiling and back over the chest. The legs are going to stay parallel, we'll keep line with the hip joints. And then you can lift the legs up to the ceiling, actually rotate and pull the legs apart sideways. And then exhale to pull them together. Inhale, open. Exhale and close. And again to stretch apart. Exhale to lift. And one more time. If gravity helps you find a stretch, pull the legs together. And then we'll bend the knees, lower the feet, adjust the bowler if you need to. And just stretch your right leg forward, your right leg back, opening up the right front side of your body. If it's a little too much for your back, you can bend the knee. Or you have other choices where you can pull the other knee to your chest. That makes it easier to get the stretch across the right hip. Do whatever works for you. If your shoulders are tight, the arm will go a little bit further away from your ear. You should feel that stretch right across the front of the chest. And then we'll slide the right leg in, the right arm forwards. Extend the left leg forward, stay down with the hip again, and the left arm back. Open up that left front side. 
and the dead rubber knee, then the left knee can pull the right knee into your chest. You could also maybe change the position of the roller of your hip. If it wasn't feeling right before, that might do it for you. And then as long as that feels great, extend both legs, extend both arms, open up that whole front line, we tend to get crunched and collapsed in front of our bodies. Especially those poor hips and our chest collapse in on themselves. You just want to be sure that whatever stretch you do feels right for your body, feels good in your body, it isn't too much. Okay, so then arms can come back, bend your knees, taking your feet down, and you bridge up, push the hips up in the air to slide the roll out from underneath you. And then lower the hips back. We'll extend the legs forward, and just begin with our roll up. Give us another minute or two before we get into our hundreds. So let's reach the hands up to the ceiling, bring the arms back. Drop body lifting, arms, head, neck, and chest come up, and we dive over the legs, round the back, stretch out here, and then press the legs forward, curl the tail up through the legs, and pull your spine down onto the mat, one inch, one vertebra at a time. Reach the arms back behind you while keeping the ribcage grounded, and then lift again. Arms can start the movement up. If you want to take your hands along your legs or put a bare bit around the feet, both of those make it a little easier. Coming back, the higher the arms are, the more work it is for you to control your descent. Be sure that if the arms are high, you're not rushing through it and falling in front. We want to come up and not exhale and pull ourselves up off the mat. Set the belly back as you dive forward. You need a C shape here with your spine not just a hip hinge. And then keep rounding the back as you rotate the pelvis around the top of your fingers and curve your way down, push the legs forward so we get the waistline back to the ground before you bring the legs down, we'll do one more step. Up, exhale, pull it over, scoop the belly back into the spinal curve, dive the head down long, the shoulders still falling behind you, down your back, and we work ourselves down into the ground again. And then from here, circle the arms around, fold the knees into your chest. Normally we do hundreds first, but it is a little easier because sometimes I think to warm up with the roll up. So we're coming to the upright curl and extend the legs up and out onto your side. Start pumping your arms in line. Five feet here, exhale, five feet down. Press the edges of the feet and the edges of the legs into each other. If they don't exactly touch, you just try to push them towards each other so you feel the inside line of your legs working. Now, as you come up into that deep curve, you're working the muscles right under the chest wall. And if you can keep your waist pressing down to a support, you can start to lengthen the legs out and away. If this is too much, you can always fold the knees back into your chest. Let's stay high in your curve, or you keep the air moving here by pushing it up and down with your arms. Inhale, and the chest expands, the belly lifts and expands sideways. Exhale, pull every bit of air out of your lungs that you can. And if you watch the line expand, exhale, watch it contract, and then the breath. And then we can fold it in until it's down. Turn your head easy from side to side. All right, now we're going to move into the single leg circle, start our air band. And we'll place the center of the band around your right foot. There's always the ball of the foot and the arch. And on tight to the band, anchor your elbows down by your waist, and the left leg will extend forward, again directly in front of the hip foot. So lift the leg, give yourself a little stretch in the back of the leg here. And just do a couple of point and flex, working through the foot, working through the ankle, going up work in the calf. We'll end with a soft point, and we circle the leg across the body, reach, keeping the right hip down, circle around, keeping the left hip down, the right leg comes out to the right, and you pull it up to the sky. So it's a short inhale for the beginning of the circle, and exhale all the way around, keep exhaling, exhaling, exhaling to the top of the movement. The body stays grounded, the arms assist by pressing down through your triceps into the floor, 
and you put extra weight in the right side before the length is left, and more weight in the left side of the body before the length is right. Let's do one more here. Rotate like internally as it crosses, neutral at the bottom, externally rotate as it comes out to the side, and neutral at the top. And reverse, externally rotate. Push the leg away from center, draw it well out to the side and out to, up to the ceiling. And we do that again. You get the support of the strap to hold the leg up here, but you're also using the strap to push out into, gives you a chance to really find some length in the leg as you spiral it through the air. Every breath, every circular action of the leg, the leg moves further and further away from the hip. One more. Short to inhale, long slow exhale for the abdominal wall contraction at the top of the movement. And then leave, leave that leg up in the air for a second. Take both ends of the bank in your right hand. Open the right leg out to the right. Take the left leg down and you can extend the left arm and look at that hand. We're taking the leg a little externally and keep that left hip firm grounded. Rock the leg slightly towards your shoulder and away. Small, slow movement. Exhale, pull the leg up to the ceiling, and then switch hands. The left hand now holds the band. Cross the leg over, lifting hip, waist, and ribs. Keep the shoulder blade down. Reach out to your fingertips and look at your right hand. Now here you rotate the leg internally. We're not bouncing it; we're just pulling it, holding that stretch, and giving it more rotation to feel that diagonal stretch across the outer hip into the glute. Exhale, you pull down from the left. Shoulder blade to the waist to the right hip to lift the leg up. Give it another little pull, stretching the back of the leg, and then fold the knee into your chest. The band comes off, and we'll extend the right leg next to the left. So you got your legs. Feel the difference, the ease of the right side of the body. The patience of the left side to do the same thing there, and then we can take the band onto the left foot. Just wide across the ball and put in your arch. And then you lift the leg up to the sky. Pull your elbows forward to move your shoulders away from your neck and from the neck. As you lift the leg up high enough to feel a stretch in the back of the leg, the knee might be bent or not. You can point and then flex the foot. Feel the ball toe, toe ball heel, so you really articulate through the foot. You want to work as many joints and as many muscles as possible. And then soft point. Lift the leg and we begin to circle across the body. Inhale, reach. Exhale, down, out, around, and up to the ceiling. The whole body is heavy. You anticipate the weight and movement of your leg and then think of putting the weight just the opposite side of the body to keep your balance, your steadiness here on the mat. So, although it, we're working to stretch the leg, we're also working to stabilize ourselves like we did before. One more circle. Go as far out into the band as possible at every point of the movement. Come to the top and reverse. Out to the side. Exhale forward and around. Drag the leg over. Push the air sideways up to the sky and reach again. That femur, that thigh bone is rotating on the hip socket. That will give you the best fit of the bone into the joint and also the most release into the muscles around that hip joint. Here for one more. Right side heavy as leg moves left. Left side heavy before the leg moves to the right. Come up to the top, and now the left hand holds the foot into the band. You hold the right side grounded as you open the leg out to the left. You can extend your right arm out or hold the hip bone down with your hand. Think of almost rotating your torso to the right into the floor like a falling into quicksand as you lock the leg gently towards your shoulder and the left. Definitely will feel that stretch in the upper inner thigh and maybe across the front of the pelvis. Exhale to pick the leg up to the ceiling, lift it high, switch hands, the right hand pulls the band, bring it across and out at your left hand. And you pull that left leg as close to the right shoulder as possible. And then rotate the leg internally. You rotate the thigh bones so that you point to the floor and that will tip the toes down. Feel that stretch. If it's too much in the back of your leg, soften it slightly. Exhale, pull the hip to the ground, lift the leg up to the ceiling, give it an extra little stretch for the back line of your leg, and then we can fold the knee in, place the back to the side, hug the knee in once, and then stretch it forward. Shake out your legs and let them just relax and lengthen. Feel the difference from previous. And now let's pull the right knee in and we'll pull it up. 
come up to sitting to lower the ball. So sitting near the front row of your mat, you will hold on to your shins, a little easier would be to your thighs. Rock back, lifting the feet up, pressing the edges of the feet together. The tail is pulled up, you're on your sit bones. Just getting how to roll. Lift your tail and move your shoulder blades. Exhale, come up to your balance point on the sacrum. So you just inhale to get back, keep your neck and head off the floor. Exhale, come up and keep your feet off the ground. We roll back here. Diving forward and up. Trying to feel that you're working the right of the foot fully so that you are straight line back down the middle of your mat and straight line up. We'll do one more. Rock back here and exhale, come up to your balance point. From here, we go into the ab series. Take the right hand to the right ankle, the left hand below the right knee on the shin, extend the left leg out and then articulate the spine down. Work your way down, elbows lies high there. Leg is pulled in tight. Just a time for the ab series, excellent timing. Inhale, let's switch the legs, left hand to left ankle. Exhale, switch again, right hand to right ankle. And we pull one leg in tight as the other reaches long. Use every connection of your hand to your leg, you look up into your hands, help you find a deeper core connection. And maybe a little higher lift of the head and the chest. We're going to end with the left leg in, we'll leave it there, pull the right leg into it, one hand to the chin, come up a little higher, and inhale, stretch arms and legs up to the sky, still the arms wide as you embrace the legs into your chest. And you stretch away from center as long as you don't collapse the spinal position. Reach, long through your fingers, long through your chest. Exhale, a deep breath out, pulls you back into center. And one more time, stretch. Exhale, and embrace into a ball. Come here, right leg up, and slide on the ankle. Look down in the line, left leg lowered. Inhale, switch the legs. This is scissors. Exhale, switch again. Use the hands to pull your chest up. Keep looking down your nose at your navel. Go to stretch in the hamstring with every pull of the leg back towards your body. The end of the left leg up in the air, lift the right leg to meet it, and support the basket back of the head, pull your elbows down and in. With the legs squeezing tight, you push the legs forward and away. Go slowly to see what you can control. Exhale and lift the legs up to the ceiling. So we're not just dropping the legs and then throwing them up in the air. You're reaching out to an arc in space and then drag your legs up to the ceiling. We're going to gravity there. So hold yourself in that upper abdominal. Be sure you're feeling the work in the upper abdominals as well as the work in your abs, trying to hold the pelvis steady against the weight and movement of your legs. Your work comes from your psoas, but you'll feel in your abs as the psoas you know, is working here. So now reach to the right, elbow to knee, and then twist to the left. It's called that. We're going to think more about bringing the armpit to the upper inner thigh. The leg shoots out long as a counterweight is a counterbalance. So the twist to the opposite side. And that helps you keep the pelvis grounded. So you get the deep upper body twist and lift as you go from one side to the other with your hips. And to the left, pull everything back and up high and then lay it down. And we can stretch the arms back as you stretch the legs forward. Just breathe into this length. Take a deep inhale and a deep exhale. And now we'll start to lift up for spine stretch. So lift the arms, lift the head, neck, and chest. Exhale, pull yourself up the mat. Open the legs, hip width, and bring the arms parallel, reaching forward for the wall in front of you. Your chest is up, the arms press down. Inhale, go taller through your halo. Look down, exhale, and bend forward. Remember, if your hamstrings are tight, you could be sitting on the yoga block or a block or anything to elevate the hips. And then you press down with your legs, stack the spine bottom to top, then zipping your breath up an invisible wall, and then we exhale and go over again. Look down, make sure the head meets the neck, and then the upper back, and then the middle back, and then the lower back. And you pull your waist back here, so you're not just flexing at the hip joint, you're actually feeling the bend of the curve in your spine and then articulate up so the belly lengthens as so the back pulls you up to a tall, high vertical position. Look down again, exhale all the way out, over and down. You can pull your belly back as you go forward. The then reach out between your thumbs. So wide collarbones to the shoulders are not keeping up by your ears. 
stay here, breathe here. Maybe flex the feet and pull the toes back for a little bigger stretch in the back of the legs. Very good. From here, we'll step the spot and come forward to the front of your mat. Should be on the front third for open leg balance and rock foot. You could take your hands behind your thighs easier, otherwise, hands between your legs. Lift your feet as you rock back onto your seat row. And we extend the right leg up in the air to keep the right shoulder down. Exhale, pull the feet back together in front suspended. And then the left leg goes up. Exhale and bring it back down. Hold it for me. Connect the edges of your feet. Right leg extends. And exhale, pulls back. Now the left leg. Your head might go a little to the outside and then come on top of the shin to end. Now both legs. They lift up in unison. It's a narrow V, just the width of your shoulder. Exhale to fold at the knees, bring the heels down and in by your tail. And we lift again like so. And exhale to fold. The next one, we get ready to roll. So inhale, extend the legs up. Look down at your belly, curl the tail up. That starts to move it back. You roll your shoulder blades only. Exhale, dive forward and up to your balance point. And your inhale brings you back as you lift the tail, exhale to lift. Like all the while, you don't start by turning the head back. You start by curving the tail up, deepening the waistline. That just shifts your balance point enough to start the movement. And then you start to exhale to, as soon as you touch the tip of the blades to the ground. That will carry you forward and up. One more. Pull yourself up, close the legs, keep them in the air. Either slide your hands down your legs as you lower your spine or you could go hands free. So you work your spine down without falling. Arms at your side, lift the legs to the ceiling. And here you also could use your therabend around your feet for corkscrew. So we circle the legs over to the right, keep the left tip down, the legs go forward and down, not so low that your back arches, bring the legs over to the left, press the right hip down and lift the legs up to the ceiling. So really trying to keep the pelvis grounded here as you reach the legs around. We change the direction each time. It's an inhale to start the movement to the right and exhale forward around to the left. We exhale and exhale to the top of the movement. And again, if the back line of your legs is tight, fold your knees a little bit when you reach up to the sky. You don't want to have the legs so far low that your back is compromised. Another option if you're tight in this back line, of course, would be to take your hands under your of your sacrum, of your glutes, to lift the pelvis tilted up, and that will help you keep the legs in the vertical. Go ahead and put one more over to the right, and exhale around to the left. So the work in your obliques, try to hold the body stable on the ground. You will feel a little shift in the weight around the SI joints. Let's finish this here at the top, fold your knees in, and we roll forward and up here for saw. Here's another one where you would elevate yourself on a yoga block, a cushion book, if the back line of your body is tight. So sit upright and extend the arms out to the side, slightly in front of your chest. Push the arms down as you float the head up as tall as you can possibly be. Let's rotate to the right, back the left hand to the outside of the right leg, and then spiral the chest open, try to rotate and look back to where that back hand is, point the fingers away to the wall. Lift to come up, hold the rotation, Unwind and spin to the left. Grab it over and down here. Open the chest. Spiral the spine. Pull yourself up. Come to your vertical position. Unwind and then we spiral again. Take it over and down. The head leads out and away. Keep rotating here through the head, the neck, the upper back. Press down through your left sits bone with this twist to the right. Coming up, center, and then one more time over to the left. Let it reach. I always feel like our bodies are strong for rotation from center, lower the arms down, close the legs. Yeah. Okay, onto your stomach for spot. So the legs will be a little bit apart. Traditionally, they're together, but that can be hard on some people's back. So when you come down, you float your forehead off the ground. Your hands are sort of near the armpit. And then we're going to pull the mat back towards your hips. With the heel of your hands as you come up, lift your chest, and then bring them down. 
we're looking a little bit more for the feeling to stretch to the abdominal line and a little less from just like pushing down to come up, right? Because even though that gives you a feeling that you've really lifted into um, backward bend into extension, it really is more about the arm strength than it is about finding the curve in your spine. So try to like shoot your gaze across the mat, up the wall, pull the elbows back down again, and, and keep your bone press, or at least the pubic bones, into the mat surface. Shoulders pull down your back, feel the stretch in the belly. Very nice. And then bring it down slowly. The back will release. And then the belly will shorten there. Do one more. Pull back and come forward. Your gaze scoops the air with the back of the head. You come up, you feel the legs knit behind you. And then draw yourself down again. So not lying, you're still gonna go work in your arms, right? But you wanna to try to make it more about the feeling of bending the spine and lifting to get the stretch of the front line. The reason we focus on that is the longer you make the front line of your abdominal wall, the more the transverse abdominus knits together to really support and protect the back. So that way you don't have to worry about like, trying to hold the belly in or do I exhale all the way so my belly is supporting my back. It will naturally happen if you really go long and curve up. You can feel it, right? See if you prop yourself up on your elbows for the next exercise. You can feel if you pull the elbows back and pull the chest forward, feel that stretch in like your skin and in your muscles, right? And then you also will feel that knitting together the inner corset of the transverse abdominus, your deepest abdominal muscle working. So now look ahead, collarbones broad, really feel that stretch in the abs and keep the right foot in one, two. Single leg kick, and now the left, foot one and two. Get the stretch in your quad. Alternating the legs here with the breath. Inhale for the double beat on one side, exhale for the double beat on the other. Don't forget, while you're thinking about kicking, you're also remembering you've got to pull your chest forward, you've got to widen your collarbone, you have to lift the gaze. You're maintaining that feeling of the swan here in this exercise. And after you do the left, we'll lay out down, turn your head to the right. So overlap your hands on your back as high up as you can towards the scapula, put the elbows drop. Take a deep breath in to lengthen your body, and then as you exhale, three feet to the third legs. Take one, two, three. Press the legs down. You can bring the arms back, palms face in or up as you lift the chest. Coming down, turn your head to the left, hands overlap high. And we pulse the air out again. One, two, three. Push the feet into the floor. Reach back with your arms. If you can, you can retwine the thumbs. But keep the wrists and the fingers long behind you. That requires more chest opening. Coming down, <coughs> to the right. And again, press the air out to the lungs with every beat. Push the feet back. We're not letting the feet lift as we come up into our, our swan, our cobra. And then bring it back down to the left. One last time, pumping here. Press the legs into the ground. We lift the upper torso, we lift the gaze, we keep the arms low and the feet heavy. Come down, take your hands by your chest, by your shoulder, push off the ground and sit back in a child's pose. This walk to the knees, not happy here. You can let your head fall down towards the ground, either knees together or open. Just try to stretch out your back and stretch out your legs. And stack the spine from the bottom to the top. All right, good. So here, we'll turn around so your feet stay where they were at that end of the mat. Unless you need <coughs> to look at me if you're in the room. Good. And the feet are apart about five inches for an exercise called neck roll. This is an advanced version of our roll up. And we begin by taking the hands to the base of the skull, the thumb sort of feel under the occipital ridge. And you can either intertwine the fingers or overlap them. So we're going to pull the skull up to lengthen the neck to feel the increased length in your spine. Elbows slightly forward. From here, you hinge back, keep a flat back until you can't, right? And then you tuck, you can pull the elbows forward, you can either bring the arms forward to lay your spine down with control. The most important thing is coming down with control and not just falling down while holding your head, right? I'd much rather you use your arms so that you can work seriously through your spine. Now to come up, if you're super strong, your hands are behind your head. If you are super strong, but not feeling it today, you take your fist into your palm, 
Straight line from elbow to elbow. Lift your head up like a pillow. Push into your arms to engage into your external obliques. And as you dive over, take your hands to your leg. And don't push <coughs> down, but pull the neck long to pull your head out over your toes, or the space between your toes, actually. And then stack the spine to come all the way up. We hinge here, reach out through the heels. You know, in a body studio, we would typically have uh, straps for the feet. And then you can bring your elbows in, even bring your arms forward, roll it down with control, come all the way down, and then you could try with the hands here. But the thing that's working for me today, so I'm lifting, I'm gonna push hand with the fist, and then dive over. Should have done more Pilates on my vacation. Dive it down. Lift, come all the way up. And we'll take it down and up over time. So lean back. Tuck, curve your back into the ground. Reach long through your legs, maintain the control, but also like the right and left side of your body. Body equally. Coming up, here, exhale, dive it over, stretch out your spine, stretch out the back of your legs, and then articulate all the way up. One last time to go down for shoulder bridge. So we hinge back, watch that there's no additional arch in the spine, tuck, upper up curl, curve your way down, work your way to the ground, and then extend the arms forward, fold your legs in, go as close to your butt. All right, so we're going to keep the legs parallel to each other here and press the feet firmly into the floor, maybe pull back a little bit to engage your hamstring. We start with the pelvic tuck to curl the tail up and forward. As you lift the tail, the knees go forward up into the toes. At the top of the movement, push down at the top of your shoulders and roll to the outer arm. So you can lift the sternum up, then lift the hips up even more using your glutes but press into your feet to find the inside line of your foot to find the inside line of your legs. And then we're gonna roll down. So let your shoulders curve up slightly. You roll just a little bit to the inner arm and you feel the scapula separate. So there's room for the spine to sink down between the two blades. Come all the way down, roll through your waist, roll over your sacrum and down to the tail and the waist float up. That was good. So we're gonna do it again. So starting with the pelvic curl, Press the waist down, the tail rises and moves forward. Come up, 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 up. You wanna have support here, you know, from the back end of the body, from your hamstrings, from your glutes, from your lats, as you push the ground down. Now let's add some kicks so we can pull the right knee into the chest. As you extend the right foot up to the ceiling, reach the toe to lift the pelvis. Point the foot to lower, lower down. If you can, touch the heel, flex and bring it back up. Point to lower, flex to lift. Reach out, flex up, point the foot, then maybe place that foot. Whew, got mine down just in time as the other hamstring was starting to cramp. So we're up high here, we push down with both legs, pull your left knee into your chest, lift the left foot, point going down, flex to rise. Point down, keep finding the work in the glute, lift here. The standing leg is pushing the floor down to keep the pelvis up. Point the foot, bend the knee, lower the foot, lift the hips. Now we roll to the inner arm and curve the upper back into the mat first. Be sure you can feel the upper ribs, then the low ribs, then the waist, then your sacrum, then your tail. We're gonna do one more, doing the reverse kick, starting with the left leg. So we rock the tail forward and up. We pull heels back and the knees forward. Push down into the top of the shoulder girdle to lift the chest and lift the hips higher. Pull your left knee into your chest, send the leg up. Flex the foot this time to go down, point the foot to lift it. Flex down, point and up. Flex down, point and lift. Bend the knee, replace the foot, lift the pelvis, square it off, get in alignment, pull the right knee in, extend the leg, flex down and go. Point, pick it up high, flex to reach out, point to lift it up one more time, and then we bend the knee, replace the foot, lift both hips up, you're probably following this a little, and then roll to the base of your spine, start at the top. Work all the way down here, come down so the tail sinks. Okay, good. You just activated the whole back line of your body. Now we're coming up to sitting for spine twist. So you can roll up 
And again, elevate your hips if that's what you need here. <coughs> Extend the legs forward. Here the feet should be flexed, and we're sitting crits right up on the sits bones. So check that you've got a little arch in your mid back. If not, bend the knees a little bit or elevate your hips. And extend the arms out and slightly forward over your collarbones, reach long through the fingertips. Keeping the feet level like they're up against the wall, we'll rotate to the right and plus one, two, three. Lift to center and then spin to the left. One, two, three. Notice that the arms stay same distance apart. You're not pulling one arm across the body to make it look like the blood more rotation you actually have. The pelvis is grounded here. Begin the two pelvic passes, the little hands holding the sacrum and the base of the spine in position as you spiral and twist. Go to the left again. We'll do one more set. Bring out your waist, bring out your breath. And last time to the left. Back to center to lower the arms. And we're going to lay down onto our backs now for jackman. So this is an inversion. If you want to take the roll across under your hips, you can. I'll go that for the first one. If going up on your shoulders is not something you want to do, in fact, it's contraindicated for anyone with osteoporosis or anyone who's pregnant. So otherwise, you can try it if you want. So easiest to take the roll across your sacrum, hold onto it with the arms, Pull the knees into your chest and then extend the legs up to the ceiling. So you would reach the legs forward, give yourself a little space for like a runway, and then you're going to bring the legs up, push down into your arms, so lift the hips. When we first learn it, the legs are like parallel to the ground. Then you would lift the legs up to the ceiling, lifting the tail as well. Bring the legs back parallel and then roll your spine down, pressing firmly into the arms. So the lats have something to say about how fast or actually how slow you move to the ground. So that would be how we would do it with the roller. I'm gonna take it out now. You're welcome to continue that way. Or to do a repeat of previous exercise if you prefer. So we're lifting the legs up. Again, lower them out, squeeze the legs together, and then press them through my palm. Bring the arms, sorry, the arms down, the legs up and over. You're always looking up. Don't look to the side when you're sure you down. And then slowly work this spine down. Try to resist gravity as you push the back forward and away from you. And then the legs will lift it out to your working level, which means your back will be arching. You feel that a lot of work in your core, but you're not overwhelmed. And now we're going to press the legs together, come up, exhale to pick up your hips. If you want at this point, you can take the legs up a little higher. Use your glutes to bring them up. Lower them again, and then work your spine down. Then you get a stretch in the back. You really try to bring your legs low over your face. All right, one last one. The breathing can be inhale, exhale in each direction, or else an inhale up and an exhale down. It kind of depends on your speed of movement. And then coming on down, you just grab the way down. So you feel that work in your arms and in your core. All right, and then we can lower the legs and we're going on to our side here for the side kicks. So, we'll go onto the side. <laughs> and you prop yourself up on your elbow. Now, when you first start this, you take your top hand. In this case, I'm propped on my right side, so my left hand would be in front of my chest. Palm spread open, fingers to the ground. If wrists are an issue for you, you would make a fist and have a straight wrist here. Another option more advanced is to take both hands here. <laughs> you only do that if you can truly stay balanced on your side seam without rocking back and forth as the legs move. So we're just gonna start both feet flexed, legs forward about 30 degrees from your spine, lift the tail up behind you, and then we pick up the top leg hip height. Flexing the foot, we're gonna pull the leg forward, reach out for the tail in the sixth bone, and plus one, two. Point the foot so it goes back and you do not lean forward. Very good. And then flex to go forward here, double beat, pulse, pulse. Point, push it back, reach your head away as you like bend the leg in the opposite direction. Nice. Flex to bring it forward one more time. The bottom leg is heavy into the ground. That's going to help your stability. And you push the leg behind you. Open the hip, use your glute. Come back to center and lower the leg. Now we lift the leg hip height and rotate internally and externally, looking from the hip socket. 
here in the crease so that the hip is steady. Actually, what it's literally doing is it's rotating in the opposite direction from the leg. Instead of like working from your waist to move the leg from the pelvic cap. So now we hold the external rotation, we lower the leg. Now point the foot to lift it up, flex the foot to bring it down. Point to lift, flex and close. But it's deliberate, right? We're trying to avoid momentum on the lift and avoid gravity on the way down. We can't avoid it, but we can control it, right? So now flex to go up, point and reach it down. Maybe we're not controlling gravity, we're controlling our leg against gravity. It would probably be more accurate thing, right? So let's lift, point and stretch it down, now double pet. You bend the knee, the legs in external rotation, the knee points towards the ceiling as opposed to towards the wall. And then we pull the knee into the shoulder, we extend the leg up, we flex the foot and reach out, out and long to close the other heel. So point the foot, slide the leg in, pull the knee in towards your ear, extend the leg up, flex and reach out and down. And one more, working through the joints and then finding the stretch and length in the leg. Tap reverse, so to keep the foot flex, dorsal flexion with the foot in the ankle, point, bend, and then skate it down, reach as far as you can, lengthen your waist, flex to go up, point bend, Exhale all the way forward and down, feel that reach, and we lift, point bend, and skate it forward here. Now for Ron Duchamp, really pull your right, your bottom arm into your armpit, press the top hand down, and we lift the leg hip height and bring it forward, rotate externally up, start rotating internally as it goes back, and then pull it back over the other leg. So we're holding the body still here. We're stretching the leg away from your center, Excellent. So you definitely should feel the work in your arms and in your core and in this bottom leg. Now come center, reverse. Open the hip, take the weight back, use your glutes. Circle forward, around, and through the center line. And reach again. When you first do this, there's a lot of support that comes from that hand pressing into the ground in front of your chest. All right, we're gonna do some other ones. We have time today. So we're gonna take the top leg back and the top arm forward. This is called the advanced bicycle. So you kick the leg forward and bring the hand to your leg wherever you can reach. Closer to the foot would be ideal, right? And then you exhale to pull the knee into your chest, heel towards your sits bone, knee into the chest. Now your hand goes down like onto the lower shin or the foot, heel to the sits bone, and you swing the knee back. Try to hold it in the same plane, feel that stretch in your quad, that's good. And then you release arm and leg on the long diagonal. And again, we keep her parallel to the floor as you swing it forward, bring your hand to your leg. Exhale to hold the knee deep to your chest. And if there's lower on the foot, you sweep it back. You try to have the heel stay to the glute, to the sits bone as you push the leg back. Feel that stretch in your quad and your psoas. I know, right? And then release and lengthen. The bottom leg has to stay heavy and work, right? To keep you balanced. One more. Take it forward. Exhale, fold it in. Inhale, swing it back. Exhale, release to it. Lengthen out on the diagonal line. Now we reverse. As you're folding the knee, the top arm goes up and circles back to reach for your foot and then pull the heel towards your butt and push the knee back to the wall. Feel that stretch in the quad, yeah? As long as it feels okay for your knee, right? And then we pull the knee into your chest, embrace it in. Now extend the leg forward, get the hamstring stretch, and exhale, release arm and leg on the diagonal line. We'll do that two more times. The arm circles up as you fold the knee. Try to keep the knee level with the ground. Don't let it lift. That's a sign of like your IT band being tight or just like that thinking about it. Pull the knee into your body. Exhale, embrace it in. Inhale, extend the leg out. And exhale, sweep it long. We do that one more time. Circle up, folding the leg. Go to the butt, pull the knee into your chest. Embrace it, make it tight. Extend it out, reach, and then go into your leg. From here, figure four. So we'll take the leg up, press the foot into the ground, and it opens and pushes away from your face. Now the bottom leg goes up and then down. So you lift the leg and then bring it to the ground. Come up here and exhale to lower. This will help stretch out that IT bed line. Good, we're gonna lift and hold it up and circle around it up one and two and three. Hold it at the top, reverse your circles, around and up one. And two, keep reaching out with the center of the foot. And three, 
lift it up, lay it down, extend the top leg on it, and slide the legs back to maybe 10 degrees away from your spine. Extend the top arm, lay your head down. Now, this will be easier if your hand is still in front of your chest. More advanced, both arms are overhead and the fingers pressed together. Most of the arm presses into the ground. So from here, we're balanced on our sideline. Pick up your top leg, hip height or a little higher. Bring the bottom leg up to meet it and the bottom leg lowers. Inhale to lift, exhale and down. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, lift and hold. Now from here, the top leg rises and sinks. It lifts and it lowers and the bottom leg is off the floor. Top leg up and down. Now we'll do one more, just for fun. And now the bottom leg supports the top one. They're both off the ground now. So it picks them up and brings it all the way down. So you lift and then you lower. You lift and you lower here. Lift and hold, little walks. Tiny steps, the legs slide back and forth. Your bottom leg again, it's off the ground to kind of balance on the greater trochanter. And then big giant sliding swinging legs. They go back and forth and you try to hold your body steady while you do this. Pull the legs together, lift them, lower them, and we flip onto our stomachs here for grasshopper. Congratulations, you did a full series of the side flips, and we have to get to look forward to doing the other side. But first this, so overlap your hands, legs and turn out, just lift the legs from the glutes and clap. Open and close. Remember, there might, it may look like there's a slight bend in the knee, but try to keep legs as straight as you can, lifting your thighs off the ground by working your glutes. And then we lower the legs, sit back in child pose. Push the floor down, we lift up and round the back, stretch out the spine, stretch out the low back, hang the head low. And then stack your spine from the bottom to the top. We turn to do the other side. Okay. So now here again, pop yourself up on your elbow. The option is to extend the arm out long and just lay your head on the top of your arm. Try to reach your top foot long so that your feet are stacked. And you can press your hand into the floor in front of your chest. Pick up your top leg, now both feet are flexed, but now we pull the top leg forward, reach back to the tail in the sixth bone, pulse one, two. Point the foot, take it back, and reach back to pulse one and two again. Flex forward. Bottom leg is heavy. Everywhere you touch the ground, and get pressing into the floor there. Come forward and then point and push it back. Come back to center, lower the leg. We're going to lift the leg and rotate internally and externally because we did that on the other side. Just try to loosen up the hip socket here. So by turning the thigh, you turn the rest of the leg. And then we end in external rotation, lower the leg. Point the foot to bring it up high, flex the foot to bring it down long. Point to lift. Flex and close. Point up, looking straight ahead, flex and reaching it down. Now reverse, flex to go high, point to lengthen and down. Flex and lift, point stretch it out of the way. Flex to go up, point, reach out and down. Let's do one more. All the way down for double head. Bend the knee up towards the ceiling, pull the knee into your shoulder, lift the foot, flex, press it away. And pull, lift, extend, flex and close. Good, one more. All the way down, tap, reverse. Straight leg, flex foot up in the air. Point the foot, bend the knee. Skate the leg down the bottom one, stretch and stretch, lift the waist, and go point bend, all the way forward and down. Go ahead, lift the waist. I really meant you're gonna feel the elongation here at the waist and probably the bottom part of the waist will lift a little bit. So let's do one more, point bend, all the way down for your Ronda Jean. So inhale, the leg goes forward, up, around, back, and through center. The body stays stable on your sideline to the mat. And you work it here. Feel how much work it takes in the rest of your body to hold stable while the leg is moving. Come back to center and then reverse. Take the leg back, open the hips, circle the leg forward and around. Reach it out long. 
circle here. Ideally, you're looking straight ahead and not at your leg. There you go. And now for the advanced bicycle, the top leg goes back, the top arm stretches forward on the diagonal. Bottom leg pushes into the ground. We kick the, the top leg forward, hold the leg, whether you can reach, it's parallel to the ground. Fold the knee into your chest, heel the butt. Hand slides down, swing the knee back. Try to keep it parallel to the ground. Release arm and leg on the diagonal line here. Inhale, the leg forward. Exhale, fold it in tight. Inhale, swing the knee back. Exhale, release arm and leg. One more. Inhale, forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, press it back. Exhale, release. Now reverse. Up with the arm as you fold the leg behind you. Pull the heel to your butt, push the knee back. There's your quad stretch. Pull the knee into your chest. Decrease at the hip. Extend the leg forward and lengthen on the diagonal. Again, inhale up with the arm. Pull the leg simultaneously. Push the knee back. Now pull it all the way in. Exhale. Inhale to reach out. There's the hamstring length again. Exhale, find the diagonal line across the top of your body. One more, arm rises, hold the knee, hold the butt, push the leg back, exhale all the way in. Extend it forward, reach, and then sweep it back, lengthen. Figure four, so bring the leg in front of the opposite thigh and try to push the knee open more to the ceiling. And then we bring the bottom leg up and then exhale down. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower. Bottom leg rises and sinks. Lift and hold it up. And we circle around to one and two, and three, lift it here, reverse. Circle one, and up, two, and up, three, and up, and then release it down, extend the top leg on it. Lay yourself out onto your bottom arm. The leg swing back, not quite straight, but maybe 10 degrees off the line of your spine. And we can bring both hands overhead if you wish. So the fingers are together, forming, I call it basket hands. And then we'll lift the top leg up. So from here, you bring the bottom leg up and the bottom leg lower. So the top leg stays in the air at the same point. Come forward. And bottom leg lifts and down, lifts and holds. Now the top leg goes up and down. The bottom leg's still off the ground. Up and down with the top leg. One more lift and lower. And now the bottom leg pushes it up and brings it down to the floor. Like your bottom leg is a freight elevator, the top leg is the freight. And now take it up, hold it up, do your little walks, walking here. And then big giant slide with strides, swing the legs back and forth. Of course, this would be easier if your hand was pressed in front of your chest. The first thing is to find stability in your body and then challenge it, right? So let's lift it, lower it down. If you do the challenge too soon, you're probably not going to be able to find the stability you want later, right? So, okay, you're doing great. So now let's come up to sitting for a little bit of the teaser preparation work. Today we'll use the band. So, to take the band around both feet, throw off your hips tight onto the bed and then you fall back onto your sacrum and find your balance point with your legs in the air, tabletop legs. Elbows can be wide and a little bit out to the side. <laughs> so as you inhale, we're just going to slide the legs forward, hold the position of your body stable, don't lean back, and then pull your legs back in. So your goal is to use your deep hip flexor, your psoas muscles, to hold the torso where it is as you stretch the legs gradually away. That's a little easier because the band is supporting some of the weight. You're doing good. So push it out, reach. Exhale and pull it back. One more like that. Try not to fall away from that torso position. Now lower your heels down, open your knees, and then dive forward. Just stretch out your back a little bit. Stretch out your hips after doing that. And then we bring the legs back together. Again, find the band support here. Curl the tail up to balance on the base of your sacrum. Lift the legs up to tabletop again. Now picture your feet into a wall. And we start to curl the tail up and roll the body back without moving the feet forward. 
and then come up, pull your chest towards the legs. Again, hold the legs steady. Yeah, that's really good. And then take it back again. You can go all the way down, lay your back if you wish. I'm going to pull. Pull with the arms, but pull with the abs, pull with the psoas. Lift to come up. And just one more of these. So you curve your way down. You don't have to go all the way down. You can go down just part of the way and then really feel the working abdominal wall to work in your hip flexors to lift. Lower the heels, open the knees, back forward. Back the spine coming up from the bottom to the top. And now full teaser from here. So we're going to lift the legs and look at your feet. So as you push the feet away, you curl the tail up, you roll the back down. You as far as you want to. Eventually you go down, the heels touch the ground when the tip of the shoulder blades do. And you lay your head back. Then you would lift the head up, upper curl. Start picking up the legs and you can start holding them in as you pull yourself up to your balance point. And then you can press the legs out and away. Roll the spine down so don't flex. And if, you're, if your spine goes down first, you're more likely to hurt your back, right? You wanna be sure that when you're coming up, first you're in your upper curl and you lift the legs. That gives you a little more support from the low back down. And then on the way down, you have to be super careful that you curl the tail up first, you roll into the sacrum, then wait, so you don't want your head down before your heels go down. Like you should be, look, look at me for a second. So say, like I wanna be in this position, the heels are down, I'm still my upper curl. That protects my spine. And it's the same thing coming up. You lift the head back to the shoulders, and then you can lift the legs, either straight or bent. So you've got to really watch because you have to kind of start, look, look at your toes and lower your toes at eye level so that you have a chance to get the heels down and the tip of the blades, but that was so much better. Because you may not realize in the heat of the moment that you're hurting your back, but you will, you risk damaging it if you don't do this right. All right, so we put this aside and we did great. We got through most of the intermediate mat today. We just are missing just like three or four exercises, I think. So we're going to end with seal. That will bring us only two or so to catch up on next time. So we come here to the front, take the arms between the legs, wrap your hands around. This is another rolling exercise. You pick up your legs, you curl the tail up. Open and close the legs as you exhale. Move from this hip joint. Pumping one, two, three. Inhale to roll back, but in the air. Pump one, two, three. Exhale, come forward. Pump one, two, three. Inhale to go back and flat. Exhale, come forward and flat. Goal is to prevent the head from slamming into the ground. Keep your head off the floor, but you can down with your legs. For some people, that's easy for me. It was really difficult. So is really think about it. And one last one. Let's switch into the hips as you go up in the air. And then we're down and we're done. Thank you so much for being here with me in person and being here with me on YouTube. And I hope everyone enjoyed their bodies and I'll look to see you again tomorrow or next week, whatever works for you.